Last time we sailed from Isla Mujeres, Mexico to the Florida Keys in the U.S. And we entered into the protected Hawk Channel, which on the charts looks to be filled with navigation obstacles, but looking more closely, the channel was very easy to sail. Except for one thing that we'd heard to watch out for. They said there's a lot, but I think you're a lot of understatement. Crab or lobster traps. The traps sit on the bottom several meters down, and their floating buoys are easy to snag on your keel, propeller, or rudder. Now that we were in U.S. waters, it was time to hoist the yellow quarantine flag to signal that we were ready to clear customs as we approached Key West. Here we are, majestic Key West. I don't know if it shows, beautiful beaches, a Cuban lobster fisherman chilling out. The entire shape of the fin is amazing. It has so much detail on, the, on my depth on the, like the full fin and everything. Like a little mean dolphin. It went right on there and then came up. The plan was to clear into Key West until this grisly weather arrived. We anchored among the small keys just before the harbor. And that is where we met up with our fellow travelers who were in a collision and demasted crossing the Gulf Stream. Yes, that looks like a catamaran. This doggy is very smart. He pees off the boat, so he goes along the netting, but he will not take a shit. He will not take a shit off the boat. He will not take a shit on the boat. And he learned how to poo on the boat because another dog showed him. When we took our delivery down to Guatemala and then we came back up, our friend had a dog on his boat and the dog literally showed Choco how to poop on the deck. Choco's a very good seaworthy dog, but he will just not take a shit. The next morning, bright and early, we were off to check in. First, we were searching for cell phone reception. Before leaving Mexico, I downloaded an app to check into the US. Happy birthday, Ravi. I don't know if it's good form to be racing a boat that's been demasted. I'm not racing or anything. I have my sails up, the engines on medium. I'm not even trying. I'm trying to slow it down, actually. <laughs> now that we were in the US, hopefully our Mexican phone plan would switch to roaming and we would have enough gigabytes to finish the check in procedure. Settling in for the day. Yeah, it's nice and calm inside of here, hey? Yeah. Thankful. <laughs> Choco, stop bark. there. We're kind of concerned for them because they've only got engine power. We, if we hit one of these crab pots, it's not the end of the world. At worst, it catches and then free lobster. Maybe, maybe we get some free crab or lobster. But they've got only their engines and I don't know how they're navigating. We're seeing them dodging them but then also going in with like the buoys in between their hulls. Dolphins. The Key West Dolphins. Who's that? We think we are currently checking in. I've got an app on the phone, CBP Roam. The app lets you submit information about your vessel in advance to facilitate getting the cruising certificate, as well as submit all the information about captain and crew before arriving. However, what we could not find anywhere was how to submit information about our dog for those who are wondering about traveling with companion animals. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, we have the boat checked in and ourselves checked in by the end of the day. The app is currently saying pending because right now the, the sailing is really nice for us to be heading north. 
we're not wanting to stay in Key West. It's just the reviews of the Anchorage in Key West are nightmarish. All, all people saying the holding is bad, it's crowded, it's hard to get to land. For us, we're paddling our dinghy back and forth from land. With any luck, we are checked in by app and then we are also further north today and we can get the dog to shore for a crap. <laughs> Watching our friends. They're catching up a little bit when the wind drops. Your phone is blowing up. I just won't shut up. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday! All with little animations. Yes. So Justine, will you me this? How does a 50-foot catamaran with full sails like fall behind us? I don't really know how it's physically possible to slow down a catamaran that much. He's got his full sails out. Yes, he's bigger than us. He's got two or three times the sail area we do. And he's going slower. And he's going slower. He's being overtaken by our dear friends who've lost the mast. Maybe he's in reverse? It Probably it might have his engines on and on reverse. Like uh, it's the only way you can think of. It's the only way that. I can physically think of of him slowing down his sailboat that like, much. That much. Are you gonna fucking do like a, a tiller chew thing? Yeah, look at this. We have the fucking tiller. Get away, chew. Uh, right. Don't tell him to get away. Let's see. Right now, it's like exactly northerly right now. Yeah, and all you're doing is kind of adjusting the wind vane a little bit as yeah. wind picks up. Trying to avoid crab traps. Yeah, there's still crab traps. Yeah, Seas one to two feet. It's amazing how much Mutual water smooth inside. to a light chop. The forecast for Hawk Channel from Craig Key through Half Moon Shoal. Issued at 10.26 a.m. Friday, December 29. Thank you, I have a good boy. This is the most ocean wave we've seen today. What was your birthday present today, Ravi? Getting stuck in a fucking crab trap the last 30 minutes before coming to Anchorage when we had 30 minutes of light left. I think the birthday present was that we didn't get the crab trap stuck in the prop. It only got stuck on the rudder somehow. So it skipped over our prop and went into the rudder because the prop is like 10 centimeters away at most from the rudder. The rudder starts here, the prop ends here. So somehow the rope only went onto the rudder, skipping the spinning propeller. I pulled up the trap and the buoy, the, ro the buoy was basically, the rope was under the, the, the little notch that we have on the rudder. The buoy was caught. Yeah. And I couldn't, like I- You wouldn't be able to push it down and then I, I let would it up. technically be able, but in, in more favorable conditions, like, you know, maybe not in the night, I could like, Release a little bit of rope, hold the buoy, then put the engine in reverse, then slide a bit. No. no, so the issue was that we couldn't put the engine in reverse because that would immediately cause the, the whole thing to move forward as far as we could know, and then that would foul the prop. Our engine is impossible to maneuver from forward, neutral, and reverse from the cockpit, of course. So we had to make a choice what to do with it while we were in forward gear. What could we do with this while you were in forward gear? So you pulled up the trap 
and had to cut at the buoy. Yeah, I pulled up, I tied the, the trap, and I cut off the last. And then the buoy was still stuck with the rope. There was still, like, two meters of rope, which was exactly the length to wrap around. So then I, I managed to, like, the buoy kind of, like, very gently pulled back when we were going forward. And I, and I hooked it with the, with the gaff and pulled out it and all the extra string. This happened, like... 20 minutes before we were just coming to the anchorage and it was a tight squeeze to get in to the anchorage before dark in the first place. And all day, all we talked about, the whole trip was yeah. <laughs> these fucking buoys. <laughs> the buoys are non-stop. There is no stop to the buoys. What I actually think happened was that our boat caught the trap while sailing and as we slowed down nearing the anchorage, we turned on the engine, thankfully meaning that the trap did not get caught in the propeller, but also meaning that if we switched into reverse to anchor the boat, we would get the rope stuck in the prop for sure. So we thought we'd take a peek inside Boot Key, where perhaps we could find access to land so that Robbie could make his way to the airport. Houseboard and that guy with all the boats and kayaks, like I go right here. Maybe, unless there's junk on the bottom, which is what people said on the charts, on the Navionics. We spotted what seemed to be free access to the shore near the defunct bridge. This bridge was left permanently open, yeah, exactly. and it was dismantled, and they don't use the island at all anymore. Boot Key was heavily congested with anchored, moored, and moving boats. Here, there is a lively and friendly cruiser's net on the radio each morning. It seems like a great place for the boating community, but there does not seem to be any more space for boats. It is seriously full. Serious dinghy dog. Shit kind of dinghy. We don't know what the cost of the moorings are, but... I don't even want to know. We don't even know. We don't want to know. There's none available, apparently. But the dinghy dock is $25 a day. So we squeezed into a small spot and let out very little chain. I think we found out why boaters pay the ridiculously high fee of $25 a day to park their dinghy at the city marina. At the top of the ridge where we left our dinghy, we met all the folks in the makeshift encampment on the road leading up to the bridge. And we were honestly shocked to see so many people living on the street as we set feet on land for the first time in Florida. What else can I say? It's a strode. Your typical strode. <laughs> Okay, good luck, Robbie. We got Robbie and Uber to the airport. The way that we came, it was more complicated because we didn't come to the harbor where they're used to checking in people on boats. After calling immigration, Robbie, you called immigration while we were sailing in. The immigration guy suggested, oh, why don't you just go check in at Marathon Airport? So it's hard to get to the airport from where we are with the dog. In fact, uh, we ended up calling an Uber. Robbie went alone to check in, check us in, leaving me behind with the dog. And luckily, because I'm Canadian, my check-in process was already done. The app, the CBP app, only managed to check in Justine. Yes, it did, it did. the app was good for checking our, me uh, in the Our Canadian. cruising permit was not processed. On the app. On no. the app. So I guess the moral of the story is that maybe at this point, the app is yes, under construction, yes. so uh, at this point, it's easy for Canadians to check into the U.S. via the CBP app. But it didn't work for Robbie to check in via the CBP app as a, a European Union person. No, because I have to. Uh, I have to put my. I asked him how come I can't get the app. And he said it's your biometrics. But you've never done that before. Yes, every time I've I've actually gone. Oh, you took fingerprints last time you were you came. When I entered with last time with the airplane, they put my. Oh, okay. They have to I, didn't know, I didn't know that. It's the way of confirming <laughs> that the passport that they're holding in their hand is actually me. Okay. 
So as a European, you're a little bit more complicated. Yes, they need a biometric they scan. They need you there in person, so that was fine. That was a good thing. They could do that at the and airport. And my thumb still has the same fingerprint. I thought it was not going to work. We declared Choco, uh, handed in his, his health check that we got in Mexico for that, and he's happily in the Most country. Been declared, and the permit's been given. And they were able to process the the cruising permit at the airport, surprisingly. Well, we, we confirm for ourselves, because this is our first time doing this. In the US? In the US, they were not interested in the Zarpe. It, should I say that? Like, I, I feel know. like I've been trying to tell Just Mexican tell authorities. Know, Cuba. <laughs> like, we, we told the, the Mexican authorities, like, the Americans are not going to be interested in our Zarpe. So, but... Wow. This is the end. They made, they made us a big headache leaving saying, Oh, why not? We happen? need the Zarpe. But if we be... were to be checking into Cuba, for example, yes, they would love the Zarpe. As another Latin American country, they really like the Zarpe. But the US doesn't seem to care about the Zarpe. It seems like Choco can go into the Publix. But I don't think he's ready for that yet. Well, I'm not ready for that yet. It's overwhelming in there just enough just getting groceries we stopped in at the public's grocery store and found chickens resting nearby join us next time again as we blunder our way up the intercoastal waterway mm -hmm.